Hi everybody, welcome to episode 34 of the Photography Explained podcast. In this episode, what is construction photography? I'm your host Rick and each week I will try to explain one photographic thing to you in plain English in less than 10 minutes without the irrelevant details. My aim is to explain things in just enough detail to help you and I with our photography and no more. I'm a professionally qualified photographer based in England with a lifetime of photographic experience which I share with you on my podcast. Okay, this is take three because takes one and two were just complete disasters. Quite a concern considering that this is my area of specialism. What is construction photography? This is my written bit, all my own words. Construction photography is a specialist area of photography where photographs are taken of a construction project. Construction photography can document any or all of the phases of the construction process, including pre-construction, construction construction phase, practical completion, post-construction, demolition, and also during renovation and refurbishment works. On my script, it says now, laughing because I still find it amusing that I'm doing a podcast about construction photography. I can't think that at any point in the past have I expected to be doing this, so um, (laughs) it's quite amazing, really. Point number one is, what is construction photography used for? Now, I'd like to go back to the bullet points I said before. Pre-construction, I photographed plots of land, basically, to allow people to add through very clever 3D visualisations buildings onto them. Proposed buildings. I photographed existing buildings that are being extended upwards so that the clever people can show those things and show the visual impact of that development. I photographed partially built buildings so that people can project forward the impact. A bit late to be honest with you, not sure why I did that. Construction phase. Now photographing major construction sites during the construction phase is it's a wonderful thing the problem is that the demand well it's not the demand is getting less and less it's just that phones are getting so much better now that the photos you can take on a phone are often good enough for a construction company which is a crying shame because they're not as good as the ones i take hey ho such is life practical completion you finish the construction project shiny new building being handed over get some photos then now this is the same as architectural photography for me I'm going to make the definition here and now about architectural photography and construction photography. I don't view architectural photography as photographing the construction process. I view it as photographing the architectural side of things. So that's why I call the two differently. Sure, the one and the same and photographing at completion is construction photography because you're photographing construction but you're also photographing the architecture, so it's also architectural. But architectural photography for me isn't photographing a live construction site. There you go, got that one out of the way. Post-construction, i put that in there at any time after a building has been completed, all the way up to a demolition, which is a great thing to photograph. Demolition is just brill. And then the final little note in this section is, and also during renovation, reno, renovation, renovation, what's that? That's not a word, is it? And refurbishment works. Before and afters are great for refurbs. They make a massive impact, especially if you take photos from the same position, exactly the same position, before and after. I don't always get the chance to do that, but when I do, I just love it. Moving on. One, what is construction photography used for? Four minutes, 25 seconds in, and I'm on point one. That's a worry, isn't it? It's used for marketing and for record purposes and also for tracking the progress on buildings. Two, why do I love construction photography? Well, construction sites are great places to work. They're hard places to work. It's not easy on construction sites, but it's great. It's different. It's interesting. It varies from day to day. And going around construction sites, taking photographs is a massive variety of work. I genuinely, genuinely love doing it. Who do I take photos for? Number three, main contractors, clients, product manufacturers, and I'll say architects here, even though I cover them in the architectural photography episode, which was the last one. If you haven't heard it, check it out. Episode 33. Clients and product manufacturers I tend to work for mainly because their main contractors are quite commercially cutthroat. Well, they have to be. It's the nature of the business. Four, can you make a living from construction photography? If you're good enough, you can make a living anything in theory. But yeah, sure, there is less demand for construction photography now than I have ever known. I've explained some of the reasons before. But you add that with architectural photography and other photographing of the built environment and you put the bits together and yep, there's a there's a full time job in there. Do you need specialist knowledge? Yes and no. 
It helps if you have specialist knowledge. If you're informed about what's going on, you know what you're looking at and it will make your life easier on site. If you've never been on a construction site before, you might be shocked by just what's going on around you. It takes some getting used to. So experience would be good. Six, do you need specialist gear? Yes. Now this is the one I made a real mess of last time, so we're going to get it straight. Oh, done it again. You need gear that is suitable for the construction site environment which is a i was going to say noisy but that's not really a thing here is it it's dusty it's damp it's cold things are moving around it's a harsh environment so your gear has to be able to stand up to that treatment i have got some very basic gear but it's pretty much bomb proof Number seven, how do you process construction photos? Exactly the same as for architectural photography. Realistically, technically correct. The one thing I will add here for above architectural photography is make sure there's nobody in the background who's or who's doing something they shouldn't or is missing some item of PPE or something because those photos are no use to anybody. Nobody wants to see them. Don't take them. So a bit of knowledge helps there. How do I start as a construction photographer? Go out and photograph buildings. Phone up construction firms, ask if you can photograph their site and you'll give them the photos. That's the best way of getting into it. It builds you up a portfolio, it gets you some contacts and I just realised I missed something and it gets you up and running. Going back to specialist gear, before you phone these people and say, can I photograph your site and give you the photos? You need some PPE, you need some boots, hard hat, high vis, possibly gloves, possibly glasses, probably waterproofs, warm clothing. You need to turn up equipped. Don't just turn up and you know, not have a clue what you need to do. So do a bit of research. Do you need to be qualified? Well, I am. I'm a chartered builder. I'm a professional photographer. And I'm also a current CSCS cardholder, which in the UK is the Construction Skills Certification Scheme. That helps me get on sites more quickly than anybody else because um, I've got a base qualification which is recognised nationally. Number 10. Not a shameless plug, but it's relevant here. Sorry, I meant my podcast isn't meant to be a shameless plug for my website, but this is relevant. Check out my website, rickmacavoyphotography.com. There's lots on there, which is helpful for not only photographers, but also clients. I've done a lot of work on this, which you'll find on my blog and some specific pages. So just head over to my website. It's all obvious to find. Quick recap, running out of time. Construction photography is a specialist area of photography, taking photos of construction sites, products and works and people. What do I want you to do now? Do this one thing for me. Go out, take some photos of a construction site. Number two, let me know how you got on. On Twitter, I am at Rick Photo. Three, subscribe to my podcast if you enjoyed this episode. This helps me. Four, rate and review my podcast if you enjoyed this episode. This helps me too. Five, tell someone you know about my podcast. This also helps me. Next episode, I'm going to continue with my specialisms, add an S on to specialism, bear with, and talk about industrial photography. Thanks for listening to my small but perfectly formed podcast. Check out my website, rickmacavoyphotography.com, where you can find out all about me and my architectural and construction photography work, as well as my blog, where you can learn lots more about photography and construction and architectural photography. Trust me, there's loads on there. Also, check out my brand new Photography Explained podcast website, photographyexplainedpodcast.com. Dot com, where you can find out how to ask me a question, find a list of episodes, and also things I'm going to explain in future episodes. That paragraph needs a bit of work, doesn't it? This episode was brought to you by the power of optimism and the anticipation of talking about what I do. I've been Rick McAvoy. Thanks again for listening to me and for giving me 10 minutes of your valuable time. I'll see you on the next episode. Cheers from me, Rick.